Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about answering your questions for grow light stations, the lights, the plants, everything that I've been doing videos on, people have had a lot of questions. Please check out the video description. It will actually have my whole series for 2022 on seed starting and it'll give you more in-depth answers on some things you may have questions on. But let me answer the questions. So this is my grow light setup. First thing as I'm using shop lights. Shop lights are being used in this case just to grow transplants. Not for flowers, not for fruit. They work really well. They cost you about 20 bucks. Short version is you want lumens, the brightness value of 3,000 to 5,000 lumens and you want a Kelvin value or the color of light in the daylight range of 4,000 to 6,500 Kelvin. They work really well. Again, they'll cost you about $20. When you buy shop lights, they're four, four feet long, so you definitely want a shelf that's four feet long so that you can maximize the light that's coming off of it. You want the width, width of the shelf to match, in my case, the seed starting flat because when my plants are bigger, this is how I put them in and I can put in, you can see all the way down there, four flats going that way. When I'm germinating, I want more intense light right on there. So I have my lights angled this way. I'll explain that in a second. In this station, I'm, you know, growing a lot of transplants. You don't have to put two lights here if you don't want to. If you just had two flats worth of seed starts you want to do, if you're doing something smaller, you could put your trays just in just like that. And then your light would just go right down the middle. You would have just one light. You don't need two lights, but I'm doing a bigger grow light station. So I have my lights set up when they're up higher, all the way to the right, all the way to the left. That gives maximum coverage down to here when my plants are bigger and growing. When I'm seed starting, so let me take this off the hook. I still have these over to the left and then I would have this one over to the right. That leaves a big gap in the middle. By angling it, I put in more intense light. Now, true, I could move these chains over to here and move these chains over to here to where these met and I would get more intense light right down there, but it's a pain to be moving those lights. So I think you can see it back there. I just did a video on it. There's a hook made out of wire and I just raise the edge of the light, put it on the hook and angle it in. Eventually I'm not going to need to germinate any of these plants. So this space might be for putting in four flats. So I want these lights in my case kind of spread out. Just FYI, I got a lot of questions about that. You can certainly move these lights closer together if you want, but that's up to you. All right, so first thing is plants do not need light 99 out of 100 times to germinate. There's probably a variety out there that does. So people are saying, why do I put my seed starts in here before they germinate? And the reason being is you want them to break the surface and be hit by intense light right away. If you don't, they're going to grow skinny, tall, leggy, and they're going to be still thinking they're in the dirt because they don't see any light and they're going to just stretch and grow. You don't want that to happen. So some people say, well, I just keep my seed flat to the side. When I see germination, I put them under the lights. You can do that, but even if you miss germination by only a half a day, it can impact your plants and they're going to end up to be kind of tall, skinny, scraggly looking. We call that plant legginess. I would rather just put it under the lights. For two or three days they can sit wherever they want. Nothing germinates that quick. But then you want to get them under the lights. I keep these lights on 14 to 16 hours for my seed starts. As my plants get bigger, you can turn the lights down to 12 hours on, 14 hours on, 10 hours on. You definitely want to have the lights on a timer and I'll talk more about that later. So a lot of questions on the distance of the lights from the plants or the seed starting mix. For germination, I'd like the lights to be two to four inches from the seed starting mix. You want your plants to germinate into bright light. That will vary on the number of lumens that your lights are. The brighter your lights are, the higher they can be. You're going to just have to, you know, start with a number. If the plants look too tall and skinny, the lights are too high. If the tips of the plants are getting brown, the lights are too close. But pick a number between two inches, four inches. If you have like 5,000, 6,000 lumens, you can be at the higher end, four inches, maybe even five inches. As my plants grow, I raise the lights. 
so that the plants A can fit under there and also they don't need as much light as they begin to get mature and you work your way down the station. So at this point these are higher from the seed starting area to allow for plant growth and better coverage too. Just kind of looking up here the light is focused right down into the middle. Right down here the light is focused so that it's covering this whole space. As you go down further the question I get well some of my plants are growing faster than others what do I do? You can keep one light lower and you can keep one light higher and you would just move the plants in your flats so that they fit under the respected light. And then as you come down further, I'm raising my lights even higher. Notice I have some flats. These would have to, you know, go into the germination area. They will go in there tomorrow. I prepared these last night. So really for the first two days, nothing germinates. So you don't have to worry about getting them right under the lights. But within that second or third day, you want your flats under your germination um, lights. The setup where they're two to four inches above there. Coming down further, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. As my plants get moved down here, eventually these get moved out doors or into some sort of greenhouse setup or something like that. And that's pretty much how my station operates. You're going to notice this foil. The foil does reflect back a little bit of light, but it also keeps in warmth. So a couple of degrees warmth can make a difference with germination. It can speed up germination. Now you're going to notice the flats are a little bit wider than the lights and maybe the coverage isn't perfect. You can drop some foil flaps down which help reflect light back in there. Also helps keep warmth in. The other thing I do too is I'm not too worried about that. I might, you know, a couple of days the flat will stay like this. Then I walk by I push it over like that. So these get a little bit more intense light. The plants over here get less light. A couple days later, I just slide it over like that. It doesn't really matter that much because we're just growing transplants and we're giving them a good amount of light so that they're mostly healthy most of the time and we get great transplants that way. Timing. So your plants are gonna germinate at different rates I can't really go over every plant with you about how fast they grow. It's just, it just couldn't be done. I mean, it'd be like a 50 hour, hour video. So take notes like, you know, these, this is, um, blue better sage. These are carnations. They don't get very tall right away, so they can stay closer to the lights. But if you pair them with like peas or something like that, the peas are going to grow too fast. So you want to have a strategy of plants that kind of germinate more slowly, stay closer to the seed starting mix. You don't want them next to plants that are to grow really fast and get tall. You want to have a strategy behind there. Now, I get a lot of questions about onions. You can see my onions down there. And if you have a good eye, you see a lot of dead onions. Um, well, I'll just show you closer. See all that brown space? Here's a tip. Don't put your onions up on your top shelf and then forget them there for seven or eight days because they're going to run out of water and they're going to die off. So they're looking pretty good. The tip for the onions is that a lot of people are concerned, well, if I'm growing onions and they're under lights for 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours, are they going to start to bulb? The answer is I'm not sure. I think they are. I've noticed that before. So you want to get the timing down right so that these are germinating. They're under the more intense lights for maybe two weeks to three weeks, you can then drop them down to the lower space where your lights are on maybe 10 hours, or you can just move them next to your lights. They don't, onions just don't need that direct light on there once they're about that size. They're going to be okay, and you can kind of just slow down the growth of, of, the, of the plant by kind of keeping them to the side until you're able to move them outdoors, if that makes sense. So they don't have to stay under the lights. They're pretty much indestructible evidenced by me for getting to water them and they're starting to come back now that I'm taking care of them. Same thing with sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes don't have to stay under the lights. Once they've really started sprouting, you can move them to the side. They can get indirect light. So let's talk about watering. You do not want to have your seed starting mix stay moist, dark, 24-7 all the time. It's not good for the plant roots. It's not good for the plant. It really adds, and you can see actually some 
I just noticed some fungus growing right in there. So that's not good. And this has been staying damper. And here's why. Celery is much more slow growing. The artichokes grow much faster. They should not be together because the artichokes take the water out of the soil more quickly. I have to water them more often. And as I'm watering, because of really the artichokes have, have dry starting mix, I'm keeping my starting mix here for the celery just too moist. So these have to come out and by keeping it moist you already see fungus growing in there and it's killing off some of the celery. So that's a strategy too. It's not so much just the growth of the plants, it's also the watering needs of the plants. So when do you water? You want your seed starting mix to begin to dry, I have plenty of videos on this, so that they look nice and light brown and then they become totally light brown and then a day or two after they look like this, you water from the bottom. Every container should have holes in it. Put in water about, you know, I mean, a quarter of the depth of the tray. Whatever's not taken up in 20 or 30 minutes, just dump out, but it'll wick the water up. But you want that drying period. It really makes a difference. Fertilizing. So my starting mix is sterile. I'll talk about that in a second. I don't typically add anything in, or at least for the first part of my teaching videos. I just wanted to show you the basic way to set up the soil. I actually add in worm castings um, and some other things afterwards. You can do whatever kind of amendments you want to your starting mix. But again, I'll talk about that in a second. You want to feed your plants. These have just germinated. It's been a couple of days. About seven to ten days after they've germinated and they've been growing, you want to use any water-soluble fertilizer. I use fish emulsion. You want to try and get the N, P, and K numbers close to a 1, 1, 1 N, P, and K. So if you have, let's say, a water-soluble fertilizer and it's nitrogen, phosphor phosphorus, potassium level is a 5, 5, 5, it says one tablespoon in a gallon, use half a tablespoon, and that turns it into a 2.5, a 2.5, a 2.5 N, P, and K. You could use that, or you could cut it down to one quarter, and you've even reduced the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium more. The reason being is this is not a container, it's not outside, so that fertilizer is going to get sucked up into that little cell, and if you over concentrate nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, it's going to make your plants look sickly. It's going to fool you, making you think they need more fertilizer, and you can really get into a bad cycle of over fertilizing and killing your plants. Slow, low, steady fertilizer, 7 to 14 days after they've germinated, and then you can do it, you know, once every week, twice every week if they need it. As the plants get bigger like that, they're going to need it more often. When they're small, maybe every two weeks. My point being is keep an eye on it. Slow and steady and adjust as you need to. It's always better to need more than to overdose your plants. Water-soluble fertilizer, if you're not familiar with that, you just mix it into a gallon of water. When you're watering your plants, then you're also fertilizing them. That's what I recommend. So let's drop down here to seed starting mix. I recommend, and that's what I've been teaching, is to sterilize your seed starting mix with boiling water to prevent fungus gnats from appearing. Fungus gnat eggs often sit in peat-based seed starting mixes. I would rather kill them off, possibly kill off any soil life that might be in your seed starting mix. Most seed starting mixes are sterile anyway, as in they have no soil life. Why am I saying that? Some people have, are getting really upset that I'm saying put boiling water in here because it kills off microbiology and your plants need microbiology to survive. And that is true. They survive better, they grow better, they do better with soil life and microbiology, but it's not true for seed starts. Once your plants get out into the ground, they're gonna get all the microbiology they need, they're gonna have all the soil life they need, and they're gonna do great. When you're just growing transplants, you don't really have to worry about that. So I highly recommend sterilizing your seed starting mix. And then you can just use the sterilized seed starting mix, water-soluble fertilizer to keep it simple, every 7 to 14 days, and your plants will do okay. I like to amend my seed starting mix, I just did a video on it, with a cup of worm castings or two cups of worm castings per 12 quarts. Once you sterilize it, you can add back in whatever you like just make sure it's a low amount of fertilizer and you don't overdo it. So the lights down here 
now that I have plants that are different sizes, I'll be moving, you know, these plants around, getting them to the right shelves. The lights down here are going to stay on 10 to 12 hours. So I recommend getting a couple of outlets like that for your extensions to your plugs. And then one of them will be for your lower lights for plants that are bigger. One of them will be for plants that are just germinating and then put these on a timer. Each one would be on a timer so that these are coming on every 10 to 12 hours going off for what is that 14 hours and 12 hours and then the lights up here coming on for 14 16 hours going off for 10 for eight hours it's a lot easier to use a timer than to try and remember in the morning to turn them on or at night to turn them off at different times just use the timers and the extension cords it will really free up your life all right let me talk about the heating mat so my house stays at about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, good enough to germinate just about everything. I only use a heating mat really for my pepper plants, but if your house, your grow room is sitting at 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, that works pretty well. Peppers, however, do like 80, 85 degree Fahrenheit temperature. That makes them sprout more quickly, maybe even within, you know, seven to 14 days instead of taking 21 or even 28 days, depending on the variety. That being said, I have one heat mat here. It's on a piece of cardboard. That cardboard helps insulate it against the metal shelf so that the heat doesn't kind of get um, pulled away from the seed flat through the metal. So put a piece of cardboard down that makes a big difference and then more heat will go right to your seed flat. You notice that I'm using one heat mat for two trays. That's going to work because my temperatures are okay, you know, warmth wise. If your house is colder or cooler, you're probably just going to need to use one mat under a flat of peppers. Once the peppers have germinated, they've been growing about a week, you can shut the heat mat off. The whole key here is that the heat mat should stay on 24 hours, so it shouldn't be on a timer. It has to be on its own kind of outlet, basically. And it should be on 24 hours until your seeds germinate, everything's germinated, they've been growing a week, then you can go ahead, shut the heat mat off, or put on another tray. You can save a lot of money by starting seeds indoors. Believe it or not, there's easily 750 to 1,000 plants on the shelf right now, or there will be at some point, not counting you know, the hundreds of onions that are in there. So seed starting may cost you a little bit money up front, but these LED lights are going to last easily five years, probably 10 years. The shelf is good forever. I do reuse my plastics. I don't sterilize them. Unless there was a problem, I might do that. Um, but I basically just, you know, dump out whatever's in there, put these to the side. I'll use the same stuff again next year. I don't use humidity domes because humidity domes keep moisture in, keep humidity in, and they're more likely to have different fungi funguses sprouting because it's just so humid in there. I don't like them. Haven't used them for 20 years. I don't recommend them. There's no need for them really. Unless you're going to be going away and you feel like you have to, you know, ensure your seeds start to stay moist. That's one I might throw on a humidity dome because it's better to use that than to have them dry out and die. But if you're able to keep an eye on things, you just walk by, you say, hey, it looks pretty good. I don't need to water it. Or you walk by and say, oh, it's getting close to watering. You just don't need that humidity dome. Let's go over on this side. I wanna show you how I label things. So when your lights are up high, you can use you know, your standard plant markers like that. I sell those at my seed shop. I sell all this starting stuff at my seed shop. And they slide under there perfectly. However, when you're trying to do some let me see, the sun is coming in pretty bright, or pretty intensely there. When you're starting like this, if you have a marker here, the light's gonna knock the marker out. So what I do is I, just right on the side, this says number four, January 20th, and then on a sheet of paper, this probably won't match up. You can see I would match it to, this says the second, but I would look for number four, I would look for the matching date, and then it's gonna tell me what I'm growing in those cells and it's just an easy way to keep track of things without having to use the markers because the markers just aren't going to fit under here where I want the light to be really close to the seed starting mix. So maybe the sunlight, you know, that's a good cue. If you're able to put your seed starting station near a window, that helps them get some UV rays from the sun. Not a lot, but a little bit. 
The point being is that when your seeds first sprout, you know, and they're up for a week or two, they have protection to the UV rays of the sun. After growing three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, up to 10 weeks, they lose that protection. So if you were to plant your bigger plants, your bigger transplants, directly out into the garden, and it's a full sunny day, that sun is actually gonna kill your plants. It's gonna burn the leaves, could burn the stems of your plant, and it could kill off your entire plant. Whenever your plants are about ready to go out into the garden, you have to spend at least seven days slowly acclimating them to the sun, basically, the UV rays of the sun. Now, it might mean 30 days, 30 minutes the first day, 60 minutes the second day. It's really going to vary depending on how intense the sun is or, you know, if it's a cloudy day. I can't give you an exact kind of recipe for it. However, one tip is when your plants just break the surface, surface they are protected from the sun because they believe they're germinating into the sun so they're doing nature's thing you can take this tray out if it's above freezing about 40 degrees fahrenheit leave these outside in the sun 20 30 40 minutes they will maintain that uv protection as they grow and you do this a couple times a week and you're not going to have to acclimate them you know come six eight weeks later when they're ready to go out into the garden the risk is that you might bring in insects if you're bringing your plants outside that's always a risk so you have to weigh the benefits to that but when it's cold out and you know i don't know if you can see but i still have snow on my ground there's not going to be many insects out there that are going to be an issue so i do like doing that with certain plants so that i just don't have to spend time acclimating all of these plants let's come back around here I think that pretty much covers most of the questions I was getting. I mean, the most important thing with respect to seed starting is don't start too early. Holding plants past their target date of how long they should be growing indoors is going to do more harm than good. So you really want to, you know, stay disciplined. I'm not starting my tomatoes yet. I want to, but I'm not going to be starting them until March 1st, maybe March 15th rather than now because a 10 12 week old tomato plant is not any better than really really any better than a tomato plant that's six to eight weeks old as a transplant i hope that makes sense all right well thanks for watching please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com check out the video descriptions for more videos that detail everything i was talking about and don't be afraid to just experiment with the heights of the light starting different seeds at, at different times take notes and you know that's what you're going to use year after year to really adjust your grow light station have fun with it you know after really your second third year you'll really be able to figure this out and you're going to be able to save a ton of money because like i said there's 750 to a thousand plants growing in here right now all right thanks for watching and again please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and really have a lot of fun with seed starting. There is so much you can grow just on basic set on a basic setup just like this.